Okay. All right. Well, happy Sabbath to everybody. Um, I've spoke to Aaron. I've, we've got the, the song Draw Me Nearer here. I've, um, I've, well, I suppose I've grown up in a church where people are singing hymns all the time and I, 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 I enjoy the, sing, the singing and basically I see the significance in, in the songs when I think of the people who've written these and we look at the lyrics in these worlds. This, this one song here I think has got a lot of meaning with our study today and um, it is uh, something that I've I've found in my Christian walk, song is uh, a very important part of it. And um, if you like scripture, if we memorize song, when the, the tempter is trying to tempt us to look left or right, by singing a song and singing praise to God, I believe the holy angels will surround us and sing along with us. So uh, today, again, we'll start the, our study here today with uh, singing this song. And if you can look at the lyrics as we go along and actually see how significant they are and where they f fit in, you know, do we hear? Um, do we understand? Have we made the commitments that, are, that this song talks about? That, um, I know I was singing this song when I was going to um, Colac Church, an hour and a half drive for me, and uh, which is my home church. And basically I, I realised, you know, what – by our words we shall be justified and by our words we shall come again to condemn. So if we're saying to consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine, we have to actually, um, if we say this from the heart, God will help us to be able to do it, like everything that we do. So um, um, I spoke to Aaron, I think the only way we can do this, it would be nice to hear everyone's voices, but I think the only way we can do it is if I sing and everyone else sings on in their own uh, area, and um, when we're finished, we'll continue as a normal Zoom meeting. So um, no music. We just need the song of human voices. So I'll start off now. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love for me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, near, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sign. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me near, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding son. Thank you. Uh, now, we'll just start with prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we've just sang this song, we ask that you help us, that we can hear that still small voice guide us today in each person who's part here, that each of us can have your Holy Spirit touch our hearts, our minds, our souls, especially our minds. And Lord, consecrate us now and help us to be able to do the will you want us to do. And Lord, help us to have that time with you as a group this Sabbath, as we see the Sabbath coming closer and closer to the last days. Bless us and help us and be with us now. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Saviour. Amen. Well, hello to everyone. Um, the study I'm looking at today is, again, we, we look at righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith is something we all uh, are aiming at. And, you know, if we if we keep spending time with God, we'll, we'll spend more and more time uh, understanding how much he's trying to do for us. I'm going to read today out of uh, Faith and Works by Alan White, page 64, which um, Aaron's got up on the screen here. Uh, so... Uh, It'll make it easier still. 
He who will lay hold of Christ's righteousness need not wait one moment that he himself may blot out his own sins. He need not wait until he has made a suitable repentance before he may take hold upon Christ's righteousness. We do not understand the matter of salvation. It is just as simple as ABC, but we don't understand. If anyone who wants to comment along the way, we'll just comment along the way. But basically, um, as a, I think this is probably um, – it's easy as ABC if you start looking for ABC and, and so, so start looking for Christ to guide us. And this is what I've found. I, I tend to um, find it is easy if we – open our heart. God can do it as, as long as we're doing our part. And our part is to surrender, to let him mould us to what we need to be so he can hear us um, and so we can hear him guiding us along the way. Second paragraph there. Now, how is it that a man will re re repent? Is it anything of himself? No, because the natural heart is at enmity with God. Then how can the natural heart stir him, itself up to repentance when it has no power to do so. What is it that brings man to repentance? It is Jesus Christ. How does he bring man to repentance? There is a thousand ways that he may do this. The God of heaven is working upon human minds all the time. And I think this is something I'm going to be looking at today, and I think it's something I've, I've realized more and more. This is what got me probably uh, the biggest step of my Christian walk is the war, when I realize how much the mind uh, is controlled by one way or the uh, one source or the other. Uh, for 42 years of my life, whatever came into my head or into my mind, I thought was just me. And I would go for it. I did a lot of silly things along the way. And it was only when I opened the Bible, which I think I've mentioned before, and all these different thoughts came into my head that I realized there is a war for the mind to be um, attracted one way or the other. So we need to be able to control our mind and be able to um, govern what comes in and how, how, how we can keep our mind stayed with God. Uh, an invitation is given in the word of God, and it is not only given there, but it is given by all those who become, who sorry, who believe on Jesus Christ and are revealing Christ in their characters. They may not preach a discourse. They may not come directly to a person and speak to him in regard to his condition of impenitence. Yet such a one sees when brought into connection with any of the disciples of Jesus Christ, there is something there that he does not have. The Pharisees saw that there was something in the disciples that they could not interpret. They saw something wonderful and were settled in their minds that the disciples had been listening to Jesus and they had learned their lessons from him. So this is the disciples then. What about our disciples and now uh, us today? Is it the same thing? And I believe it is, basically. We, if the more time we spend time with God and listen to what he's guiding us, um, the more we will be able to have the same experience. I asked a question this week to, to someone, and I think there are a couple of people, you know, do you hear the devil tempting you left and right. I'll ask the question here. What about everyone here? Do you hear the devil talking to you when he's uh, tempting you to look this or think that or do that? Yes, no? He's been leaving me alone in some ways, but uh, more troubling me in other ways. It's not so much temptation as much as trying to bring me to despair, to give up. This, this I guess that's a temptation. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, distractions. That's what I'm getting at. The, the, the oh, things, okay, yeah. The things yep. that come into your head. And you know, I think that the devil is always trying to actually distract us to look left or right and not keep focus. I I found, as I said, I found when I memorize scripture, 
And when I memorize song, it actually keeps my mind stay with God, which is we'll, we'll touch on later on, which was uh, the, the the Bible uh, verse we did last week. Last time I was here was Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou shalt keep me in perfect peace as mind is stayed and he could he trust in thee. Trust in the Lord. That, you. Yes. Uh, amen. That is what, what works to give relief is I, I'll read a few verses of scripture, meditate, talk, that and, uh, listen to listen to scripture songs, listen to hymns, more so than just listening to a sermon, even just the music and the word of God and thinking on it. Amen. Did you have something to say, Angela? Yeah, sorry to cut in like that. Um, I was getting. I might have might be misquoting it slightly, but there is an old hymn which which I know Stephen knows, and tempts me to despair, reminding me of guilt within. Upward I look and see Christ there, who made an end of all my sin, and it's so encouraging. You know, it's just so. Amen, amen. And I think that's something we have to understand. We have to start looking at how did Christ overcome, and Christ Christ overcame by beholding. He became changed. He. He he did nothing of himself, and he he was in prayer every morning to the Father to give him the strength to get through each day. And I think this is something I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to look at today: is how do we keep our mind from being distracted left and right, and but especially as we start coming closer and closer to end days. You know, the hundred forty four thousand have followed the Lamb wheresoever he goes. So we need to be understanding how and when we're being distracted, when our mind is not where it should be. And it's uh, it's something I've found um, as we're coming closer to the end time, there seems to be a lot more distractions, things trying to divert us. And um, I have uh, the um, the conflict series, five books on a USB. And I'm, when I'm driving, I'm, I'm listening to it all the time. And she keeps saying over and again, our trouble will be in, in, in from our brothers and sisters and family around us more so than outside. So it's something we have to, Pray that it's not us giving other people problems. So, uh, one I'll, of the uh, to, to comment on that actually, last Sabbath I did attend church, and when I, after after coming back, I had this sense while there that the head elder I've met him before, but I had this sense of that he I didn't feel good about him. I've met him before, and. I want to have a conversation about him. I, I felt that he was irritated by me asking for a ride home, that uh, I also interjected in his sermon and commented. And, and on the ride home, I gave him a couple of points on his sermon about where he can do better, and I thanked him for his sermon as well. I didn't all be negative, but he didn't take correction well. And, and I thought, you know, this is the spirit that is going to infect people's hearts and minds to persecute us from our brethren. And I I had a very sad reaction to that. It was troubling. It actually, triggering is one word, but yeah. And I struggled to understand why I was feeling so, so discouraged and oppressed. And it lifted as I prayed for the man and, and, uh, Sang some hymns. And, Amen. Yeah, I think this I, is I identify with that. Yeah, it's something. It's something we have to understand, and it's especially we can see it in others, as you can say. You're just saying, Colin, but we have to actually be aware that maybe it might be us sometimes doing it to others. So we have to actually look at all all round and and how and why. Um, and I believe God is training us to do this. So. Um, Amen. 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 Because that was the other part of it. That was the other half of it. it was seeing how I, like Isaiah, was he saw how he was guilty of the very same things that he saw in God's people, where they were falling, failing. Amen. 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 Okay, I'll I'll read on. There are impressions that are going forth all the time. There is an atmosphere that surrounds the human soul, and that atmosphere is a heavenly atmosphere or a hellish atmosphere. Just what we're talking about. There are but two dis- distinct lines. Either we are on Christ's side of the question or on the enemy's side. And if we are continually drawing rays of divine light from glory, angels of God 
are around about us and there is an atmosphere that surrounds the human soul. Our very attitude, our very words witness genuine conversion to all who come within the sphere of our influence. The spirit of the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst say come. So it's exactly what we're just saying there, uh, Kelly. It's a matter of we have to understand because we can see it in others, but we have to recognize wherever it is um, from us as well. So um, let, let, let's let's leave it to God to help us to mold us, be molded what He needs us to be. Now that we are, and, then, and, I, I, and I think in, until we can see it in ourselves first, we don't really have a true perception of it in others. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. No, it's one that um, I, ha- I have a friend uh, give me some help around the farm here every now and then who um, uh, he was here when Theodore was here actually. And he's a good helper, but he tends to go and do things that he wants to do himself, um, which to me is a little bit annoying because I, I'll ask him to do something. He'll just go and do something different. And like, it, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he means his best, but I don't understand. But I said to my wife, you know, I have to ask him next week why he does that because um, – he just, uh, yeah, anyhow, well, it's a matter of uh, work it as we go. I'll read the last paragraph here. Now that we are branches of the living vine, we will be nourished by the sap that flows from the vine. It flows all the time to every branch, and every branch will bear fruit to the glory of God. It is your Father's good pleasure that ye bear much fruit. Well, then, what is our position? It must be a position of living faith. Now, living faith in God is able to do it for us if we go and ask him what we need to do. Is that what it's all about? As long as we're doing our part, and I think that's probably the, the biggest part of it, isn't it? It makes you staying close to God by not doing anything that separates us from him. And um, as I said, I, I, I enjoy driving. I'm, I'm in my car probably at least two hours every day, and I'm, I've got the conflict series on all the time. So... Our life is probably what we call Adventist um, doctrines. We we live in the country where we're surrounded by nature. Whenever I'm driving, I normally go to town once a week. We have a TV. The only only thing we watch on TV is uh, Gary Kent, The Incredible Journey, on a Friday night for half an hour. So we're we're not distracted by worldly things around us. As I said when I go shopping, I go shopping in town, which. Um, I ran into different people there, but basically it's um, it's a matter of how do you keep yourself in the love of God, and it's a matter of um, and it's a matter of spending time with Him, and it's, a, it's something as you were saying before, Kelly, and something we have to realise when we're talking to people. And I I asked uh, Theodore the other day it was of like, last time I was in my church in Colac, which was probably a month and a half ago now. I, my prayer I could didn't feel was right, and. And I wanted to ask him to he said, yeah, sometimes that happens when there's someone who's not happy with you being there. Um, and I found that uh, that might have been what the situation was there. But anyhow, it's a matter of um, we have to look what we can do to improve. And we need to pray because I believe God will always show us what we need to do, which way we need to go. Um, I'm going to have a second reading now out of uh, that I may know him. But um, when I looked this up, I, I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, that's that's the one we're after uh, there. Okay, under under God's searching eyes. So this is again the 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 uh, what we're what we're what we're talking about here. Under God's searching eye, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. So again, we have to recognize there's one and the other. And that's something, that's something I was realizing the other day. Every now and then in life, we need to uh, step back and look at where we're going. And if we're not going in the right direction, we need to actually say, well, maybe it's me that needs to change and not the people around me or something around me. Um, so it's uh, it's something that um, God wants an honest heart. You will seek me and find me when you search me for your heart. That's one thing I've found. If we go to God and ask him something, we know that he knows 
the innermost depths of our heart. And you know, if if we've got honest an honest heart, he 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 can guide us to what we need to do. And I I always think to myself, you know. He, uh, Hebrews 4.30, neither is there any creature not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eye of him of whom we have to do. So when we go to God, we can't fool him by saying we want something, we're not doing our part. But um, it's it's a matter of talk to him as friend with friend. And it's a matter of, uh, you know, you, you you get to know who your friends are in life. And as, uh, as we get older, we realize we haven't got many friends and um we have lots of acquaintances, but uh, really good friends. And um, I was talking to somebody this week about that. That's right, a friend of mine. And so when, when the punches are flying back in my younger days, you knew who your friends were. And, again, the same with our Christian walk. When the, when the trouble comes, we know God will be by our side if we've done our part. Okay, we'll read um, on. Provision has been made whereby every soul that is struggling under sinful practices may be made free from sin. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John one twenty nine. The Christian is not to retain his sinful habits and cherish his defects of character, but he is to be renewed in the spirit of his mind after the divine solitude. Whatever may be the nature of your defects, the Spirit of God will enable you to discern them. And grace will be given you whereby you may be overcome. They may be overcome, sorry. Through the merit of the blood of Christ, you may be a conqueror. Yes, more than a conqueror. And yes, it's where our faith starts kicking in, isn't it? Ask the Lord to reveal to you yourself, place your life under his searching eye. And when he lays hold upon your case, you will see that your you have made grievous mistakes, and what you suppose was a little importance was offensive in the sight of heaven. You will see that there is a decided need of thorough transformation of character. You will realize that you must put away the evil of your doings and cooperate with God and heavenly angels who are sent to minister unto those who shall be heirs of salvation. Okay, there's a part for us to do and there's a part to ask for help along the way, isn't there? So we need to do our part as well. Okay, next paragraph starts off with a big problem, the, 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 the troublemaker, isn't it? Self must die. Every practice, every habit that has harmful tendencies, however innocent it may be, regarded by the world, may be battled with until con overcome that the human agent may perfect a character after the divine pattern. And I think this is something I've realized, and it's something that we, we you know, we've got, we've got such a gift in Jesus Christ, and we've got such a gift of being called a, a, a son of God, that we can go to our Heavenly Father and ask for help, that it's, it's amazed me that people don't do it more often, or we, I don't do it more often. Um, I, I, as I said, I, I drive along listening to the conflict series, but I also... As I'm driving along, I just stop some. Sorry, I just as I'm driving, along, I just stop the uh, USB and then just talk to God, like I'm talking to everyone here now. And I think that is the thing I've realised in my Christian walk. And I was talking to my brother yesterday, was an elder of the church. You know, we when I talk to people about Christianity, I always ask them just to talk to God as their friend. I said He is your best friend, and I think. Uh, the world has a different conception of where God is and what he is. And, um, you know, we know he's holy, 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 but he, he also is our best friend and our, our, our companion in life. And his, his Holy Spirit will guide us whatever we need to do and what we need to learn. So, uh, this, this last part of this chapter, uh, paragraph is actually probably the way that I, 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 I mentioned this many, many times. The crooked ways, the perverse doings of those around us are not to dim the luster of our piety or to lead us to conform our habits to and assimilate our customs and practices with the world's. Let the prayer go forth from the lips of those who claim to be the sons and daughters of God. And this is Psalm 139. This is one I, I've often asked this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. I think this is actually uh, 
as I said, it's one of my favorite <laughs> small prayers that I often pray. God, is there anything I'm doing wrong that will separate me from you? Because I know if he's with us, nothing can be against us. And we have to understand that um, God is guiding a people. And, you know, we, well, as we said earlier on, his people will follow him wherever he goes. And it's a matter of starting now. And when we look at uh, what's happening and what distractions are coming into the world now, um, it, the most important thing we have to do is where are we with God? What are we doing? Which way are we? What, what, what do we need to do? So, um, okay, so now I'm going to go back over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 18. This is... Uh, Basically, a, 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 another simple one with, you know, what does what does God want us to do? Um, and I, I found when I came into the faith, basically, um, when I realised just what we're what we're doing. So we're reading, we're going to be reading Matthew eighteen verses three to five. Just um, so I realised just what was going on, the war between good and bad. And basically, um, I probably did do this childlike faith. Having said that, God helped me because um, I think I've mentioned before, we sang the song last week. He, uh, so last time I was here, he lives. He puts things into my head. And when he puts things into my head, I follow through. Uh, um, at the time when he put that song, he lives into my head. I went and looked at it. I didn't know what the song was. only just came into the church. That was 30 years ago. Um, and I found it helped me. The same as this song here that um, draw me nearer. Basically, when I when I memorize that song and sing it, I found it did draw me nearer. And basically, um, he he tends to give me what I need. And so I think it's, it comes back to this, uh, what we're going to read now in Matthew, that if we recognize where we are and where God is, we can actually be helped because we just do our part and our part is to stay uh, stay close to him and ask. You know, um, Isaiah 1, 8, 9, we, we don't ask enough, <laughs> so we need to ask more. So Matthew 18, 3 to 5, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, sorry, and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and so verse 4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm just going to stop there for a minute. Now, isn't this so simple? You know, that we... <laughs> beings made of the dust of the air, of the earth, sorry, can come to the God, the king of the universe who is omnipresent, omnipresent, and humble ourselves. And nobody knows except you and God anyhow. So it's silly that we don't all do it and do it more often. As I said, that's why when I'm driving along, I stop and talk to him. And I don't know about you guys, but basically I, I found that it helps. And um, he gives us the help we need which is, uh, I think, uh, something that I've, I've realised on my journey. Okay, we'll go into verse 5. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So basically we see that here's the God who's actually talking to us and actually guiding us on this journey. And um, all he asks, asks us to do is be as the children. And funny, I... I um, I was just watching some home videos of when my children growing up because uh, we were probably a bit blessed with um, coming to Christ when our children were very young. So my children were, I think, two and four, three and three and five, uh, very young when we when they first came to um, find God. And basically we, we did what the Adventist um, message said. We left Flemington, which was four million, four kilometres from Melbourne, right in the centre of Melbourne, near the Slemington Racecourse, and we moved to the country on 80 acres, which we're still on now. And we had, we I stopped my uh, sports. I was a martial artist and a basketballer. I gave it all away, and I just stayed on the farm and just did work around the farm and spent time with my two boys. We homeschooled them till they were 14. And when I look back on that time, it was the best 
you know, my people comment on the character of my two boys now. And I, I see what it is. We, we, we used to attend church all the time. We used to do morning and night worship. We had uh, lots and lots of time together. And because of that, these boys have got that character. They've got a, a, a really beautiful character. And I, when I look back on it now and I'm thinking, you know, if I hadn't have became a Christian and had have still been doing my sports, my sports would have probably been my gods. And maybe I could have taught my two boys to be good sports people. Uh, which they still are now, but um, because they've gone their own way. But basically, it's something that we have to realize God is teaching us and molding us what we need to do. And um, I found that um, it's something we we need to um, go go forward from there. I'm going to do another reading now from the the, the the book, The Voice in Speech and Song, page 317. I'll let Aaron look that up if he can. And it's called The Need of Presentation in Every Discourse. Uh, so that's basically the voice in speech and song. I'm not sure if Aaron's going to look this one up. I'll let him sort of give me a bit of time. But, uh, yeah, so now my boys are 33 and 36. And, you know, they've gone their own ways. Um, my son, younger son, just got married Um and he did pray for God to send him a country girl. <laughs> so he has got um, some foundations there. So um, and uh, so we'll pray that they will um, um, be able to be the next wave of uh, leaders to lead people to Christ and to sal- salvation and eternal life in Jesus Christ. So we're going to read The Voice in Speech and Song, page 317. And it talks about need of presentation in every course. I'll just wait for Aaron to get it up on the screen, and then we'll read it here. It says it's something that um, basically. What well, was uh, the title? Need of presentation. It's in it's in chapter fifty five, promises of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And it's the second second paragraph, not the first, it's the second. Need of presentation. Go down there, there it is, need a presentation, only a short paragraph. And this is something we all need to be looking for. So, okay, I'm going to read now the presentation in every discourse. Now, the Holy Spirit is to be presented in every discourse. What wonderful statements Christ was has made concerning his representative to the world. This is the theme of encouragement to be kept before the people in comprehending the office of the Holy Spirit. We shall bring all blessings to ourselves. He will make us complete in Christ. Now, is this not something we want all the time? We want the Holy Spirit to be leading in this group now, even though we're a small group. We, we can claim to promise two or three of in his name. He is in the midst of us. Isn't this something that we should be asking for the Holy Spirit? Have you ever been in a, in a, in a meeting when you think the meeting's not going right? We have to ask ourselves why, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then I think this is what we need to recognize when the Holy Spirit is there, when the Holy Spirit is not there. So it's um, it's something that, um, that, do you know what I'm talking about with this one? It's a gut feeling for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that, 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 that's something we have to recognize, um, Kelly. Like, you know, when you go to a church, like I, I know when I've been in a church, I make everyone feel welcome when I'm there, and it's it's something that I've, I've, I've unfortunately I've, I've been to others where it doesn't. You know, I went to a church one day, and there was I, I tried to talk to the man beside me, but he wouldn't even look at me. Um, I don't know what was the problem there, but uh, I know I'm normally very happy to be in a church. But it's, again, we need the Holy Spirit to go before us. Now, I've, I've often asked people when they come to church, you know, why do you come to church? Why have you spoken to God on the way through? And why do you go to this place and not another place? My wife and I've, I... I've gone, I've gone to one church where, you know, it's very typical for to see that you're a new guy in the midst and uh, after church standing in the foyer waiting for someone to talk to me and no one spoke to me. No one invited me to potluck. Nobody invited me home, and I just left. Yeah. It was an interesting social experiment for me because I was going to wait until someone approached me because I usually do approach others. 
Yes, yes. Now, no, we're, we're, we're the same. That's why we're, 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 times have changed, Kelly. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because people are just locked in their mobile phone and forget there's other people around them. Um, this was about but, 10 years ago. So, yeah, it's getting worse. Although, you know, I do attend smaller congregations and it's very, very inviting and people do approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's something that um, we we have to understand what we are, where we're going. And it's a matter of um, we have to recognise the, the, the atmosphere we're in. And, 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 and basically it, it's the Holy Spirit we need to go before us. Because there's other times when everything just works out perfect, and that's I think when we recognise the Holy Spirit is there. Okay, we're going to go. I'm going to go back to actually um, Isaiah 26, three and four. I know I've quoted this one a few times now, and basically I, I just it, it's one of my favourite verses, and basically um, I found that it it um, it's it's a matter of what we need to be doing, and it's a matter of it, you know. It should be part of our life that we can keep our mind stayed with God. And basically, um, I shall keep in perfect peace his mind is stayed in it. So this is this is basically what I'm I'm looking at, and it's a matter of how do we do it. And I I I found one of the best ways to memorize scripture. And again, which scripture? Because I found um, that you know draw me nearer starts with I've heard thy voice and it, and it, it told thy love to me. I pray for what scripture? And basically this this week I was memorizing Isaiah 28, um, verses 9 to 12. And basically I I found, I don't know about everyone else, when I start to memorize scripture, I don't just memorize them straight away. It takes some, some effort. <laughs> and um, and I never, I've never really seen the uh, significance in those verses. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll read them now. I think everyone will know these verses because they're very popular verses. Isaiah 28 verses 9 to 12 and um, it's it's something that um, especially for us as Sabbath keepers verse 12 is very significant that was what I was having the trouble memorizing which um, was a, a bit of a strange one but um, so Isaiah 28 verse 9 says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, I think well, I think this is probably v- verses that everyone knows, but I've, I've just memorised them, which is, is, I think, there's knowing Bible verse and then there's memorising. When they memorise them, I've found it becomes part of you. It's a bit like um, uh, I, I always think of self-defence with uh, when I used to do uh, martial arts. It's, it needs to be reflex action. And if you've got Bible verses that are... Um, memorized um they are part of you so one day when jesus was tempted it is written it is written so i'll just keep going them that are weaned from the milk and will from the breast now verse 10 for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little and verse 11 for his stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people Okay, so you know th- these are interesting verses when we look at it. I, I said I've, I've read them before, but to memorize them another one. Now, verse 12 is, is the one where I believe we're talking about Sabbath keepers here. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Interesting, I, uh, my motor mechanic um, who fixes my tractor is a, a Baptist. He's one of the leaders of the Baptist church. I'm not sure if I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. And um, and I asked him one day about um, look the Sabbath, and he said, "Oh, look, you know, you you Ad- Advent is always the Sabbath, the Sabbath." I said, "Well, look, it's it's one of the commandments. I'm, I'm not um, having to go. You, you can do what you want, but it basically is one of the commandments." And anyhow, to his credit, he came back to me one day and he said, he thanked me for asking. Him. He said, "I went to our church," and he said, "We've got some pretty knowledgeable men, men there." And he said, "And he said I've been going to the Baptist church since I was two years old." He said, "But." I, when I asked them the question, no one could give me the answer. No one knew why we we're going to church on Sunday, on Sunday instead of Saturday. Why the Sabbath had been changed? So it's uh, it's something that uh, you know God is after honest people. And the first one we have to ask is, are we honest? And are we doing what God is telling us to do? Because I believe God is 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 guiding everybody home. 
and he's teaching everybody. We just need to do our part. And our part is, Lord, you show me and I'll do it. And, uh, you know, you lead me, I'll follow you. And that's basically where we need to be going. And, um, yeah, so then last time I saw him, he was, uh, he was saying they were doing Bible studies. I'm almost tempted. I'm going, I've been praying about going to their Bible study, actually. But um, it's, uh, it's something that um, we have to wait for God's will. I'm not going to read much more. I'm going to actually, now, how do you keep yourself in the love of God? And actually, how do we keep this Sabbath? Now, I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians 5. And um, I'm going to read to, to, to what I believe keep yourself, how you keep yourself in the love of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 19. Okay. So I suppose I imagine a lot of people would know these verses too. But again, it's a matter of... Um, how do they all fit together? So how do we keep ourselves in the love of God? Rejoice evermore. We, we are so blessed as Christians. You know, we have a hope that a lot of people don't have. You know, if if I get run over on, as you know, walking down the road, we are run over by a horse or a cow out in the paddock here. Uh, I know where, where, where my salvation is in Christ. And I, you know, this is why now is the time we need to be saying, God, Search me, our Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. This is why I, I keep saying, if we're not doing it now, why aren't we? We've got a God who actually is going to guide us and show us, and one day we have to stand before. So why don't we ask him now? So we should be rejoicing evermore. <clears throat> pray without ceasing. Now, how do we pray without ceasing? That can be done lots of ways. It's, uh, you know, our mind is where we're trying to keep our mind stayed in God. Now, as I said, I'm, I often talk to God as I'm driving along, as I'm walking along. Um, a, a, an interesting one, I was just fixing up some windows on our house here. We got, we, our, our worst weather here comes from the west. Uh, we get the, the, the wind, the, the rain and the sun is the most intense. And the three back windows, the, the mantle rotted away. And I was trying to work out how to fix it without ripping the whole windows out because we're hoping to move from here soon and get moved further away from the city because the city's now creeping closer to us. And I thought I'll get a bit of metal and bend it round to um, to cover the, the rotten bit and hopefully I'll take the weather. And I and I got some metal, but it was too small. And I got here and I prayed, God, please help me to know how to fix this up. Uh, I'm an electrician, not a carpenter. Um and then I got the conviction, well, if I chop the front off this mantle, then I can actually fix this metal in and slide it underneath the glass. <coughs> so you know, whoever that comes in after that will just roll off and it'll be done. And I thought that later on, it came up so well. And I was just thanking God for the help. And, you know, we can talk to God about all things, even fixing windows. And I was so happy when I, when I look at the windows finished now, um, where it was all rotten wood and actually falling away. Now there's a bit of metal that goes right through that is like brand new again. And um, it took a little bit of effort to do it, but it was actually very easy, much easier than replacing windows now than the paint houses inside and out. Uh, so, uh, again, let's go on to verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Uh, the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And again, it's like me talking to you people here. They're like, you know, you guys don't know me very well. If I, if uh, Theodore was here, he'd know me a bit better because he was. we had six weeks together here. But as we progress in life, what's our relationship like with God? And I think I can ask each one of you here, Angela, um, I think William's gone, basically, Kelly, how's your relationship with God? And basically, you know, can we just talk to him like I'm talking to you now? Do you talk to him like you talk to him now? It's um, it's something we all need to be um, actually doing, I think, and doing all the time. Any comment on that one? How 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 often do you talk to God as as your friend? Well, I talk to him quite often, and he speaks back to me too quite often. Amen. Well, that's that's good, Angela. Well, because I, just, I, I yeah, I just want to. Make on, on the Ephesians four four verses that you gave when when we started this class, I I was wondering about spirit of the mind, and so I looked them up in Esword, and the spirit when I was reading it in Esword, it sounded to me like the spirit could be what is influencing your mind or just the state of your mind. 
And I found that really in interesting. So which spirit are we tuning into when we are thinking? It's Amen. pretty sobering. Amen. Amen. Well, that's, that's, well it's interesting, uh, Angela, because I often to ask people if they hear God talk, and they look at me weird like I'm a weirdo. I don't understand why, because I, I do hear God talking back. And it's good that you're hearing him talk back too. And I think this is the ultimate for all people. Um, I was thinking today about um, when you meet people in the street who don't know anything. And you like, I, I, I always start my conversation, have you got any religious beliefs? And I'll, I'll tell this story. I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. A, a lady called Stacy. I think she's about 30 years old, quite a large woman. And I asked her if she had any religious beliefs, and she said, no, but I'd like to. And I said, really? I said, well, look, I've, I've got a book I'll give you, because I, I always carry with me Steps to Christ and Desire of Ages. And depending on who they are and what they are, I'll give them, uh, if, they've, if, they've got, if they've read their Bible at all, I'll give them Desire of Ages and show them how to look at the, the, chap, the start of every chapter. If they've got no religion at all, no, never had anything, I'll give them Steps to Christ and explain to them. But the most important thing I tell them is, when you talk to God, talk to him as your best friend. And he said, if you if you want to talk and ask anything, he already knows what you're going to ask. But just ask him and talk to him as your best friend. This Stacey, I went backwards and forwards from the shop a couple of times. And one day I walked in there and she said, you, you, just talking about you. And I said, well, what happened? And she said, I had this suction thing on the window and had a hook on it. And the hook broke off ages ago. And she said, um, I've been trying to take it off with a knife with a scrape and it wouldn't come off. But for some reason, you came into my head yesterday, talked to God as a friend. So he asked, she asked God to help her take the, the, the suction off the window. She said, I just touched it and it fell off. She said she couldn't believe it. she came in telling all the people about it. So here's a woman praising God who doesn't even know God, but she talked to him as a friend and he taught, taught her as a little child and came to her and said, well, you know, I'll show you how close I am to everyone. So I don't know where she went from that, but she had steps to Christ with her. So if she could. And take those steps to Christ. That's ultimately what uh, we all need to do, isn't it? And and it's it's something for each of us, especially as we're coming closer and closer to end times, to actually spend more and more time asking God's guidance and and direction. Uh, a quick experience like that. Here I've made some new friends, and one fellow is going through a difficult divorce. His wife is being bitter and resentful and difficult. And I said, well, let's pray for her. She's under the influence of friends and family telling her to do that. And so we prayed for her. And and uh, this week I asked how things are going. And he said, uh, she's being so nice and, and kind now. And I said, amen. We prayed, didn't we? And I reminded him and it strengthened his idea that God will help him. It's been a really nice experience. I think that well, that's that's the the one of the best things, isn't it, Kelly? The, the the power of prayer, you know, not it doesn't only change us; it changes them as well. Uh, also, it doesn't change them; it actually also changes us. And it's exactly what um, I think Angela touched on a, a a very important point there. We are talking about it. What about the people who don't know about it, who are actually going through this? Have you ever noticed the the evil spirit comes in and talks through your mouth? So we can be used for or against. So if we, we read that earlier in one of the readings. I think it was um, that we can be used for the, by the devil or by used by God. And we have to be aware of it. If we're aware of it, we can do something about it. Here's, here's one that really uh, came, really came home to me. It was uh, about 10 years ago, and I'm apprenticing as a plumber. And got this girl that's also apprenticing as a plumber, and <clears throat> she was... She was difficult, and people generally didn't like her on site. And then I was having an argument with her, and, and I said to her, you know, nobody likes you here anyway. And that was the last thing I said to her and went on with my day. And the next morning we had a had a tailgate meeting. They called everybody to the lunchroom and announced that she had taken her life that, that night before. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, and... Uh, you know, it reminded me to always be kind. Amen. I, I know she had a lot of things going on for her, and I wasn't the straw that broke the camel's back, but I might have been. 
So yeah, to always be kind. I think the, mo the most important for us, Kelly, is to remember who we represent. And, you know, you'll, you'll find the people around you when you do something wrong will be the ones who will be saying, aren't you supposed to be a Christian? Um, I know there was a, an a, a apprentice we had, uh, a second-year apprentice who um, I, I, I apparently, I think he was going through depression. He, 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 quit, he wanted to quit. We went, well, I had him with me and we went to do a, a, um, a solar system on a double-story house. And this guy's, this kid's mind's all over the place. And I'm thinking, wow, well, this is the last thing I need is him. He, he, he quit, I think, three or four times in this one day. And um, in the end, I said, look, talk to your dad. No, it only talked me out of it. And then um, in, in the end, um, I said, well, look, you know, if you want to you want to quit, if you really made your mind up, I'll put up. And we had another kid who was waiting for a job. So we just told the new guy, well, okay, you've got a job. This guy's quit. So I think two or three days later, his father rang up and abused me. And he said, you know, you know how, what are you doing to my son? And I said, well, I didn't do anything. He quit. Not, I didn't sack him. He said, yeah, but don't you know he's suffering from depression? I said, well, look, I'm an electrician, not a um, psychologist. Anyhow, and in, 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 in the end, he ended up, that, that apprentice kept was saying, well, you're supposed to be a Christian. Well, I, I might be a Christian, but I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't read his mind. If he's telling me, I've tried to talk him out of it four times. Um, so, you know. You, you, you can't win, you can't lose. It's one, I don't know. It matter of fact, but anyway, in the end, uh, we put him back on again and gave him another try. And then in India, he didn't, he didn't work out. And, and then when he left the second time, he, I think he wanted to take us to small claims to try off um, adverse, um, what do they call it, uh, putting him off without uh, cause and wrong, he, wrongful dismissal. Wrongful dismissal. Yeah. So in the end, I, 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 I was told I'd better get a solicitor. So it cost me five hundred dollars to get a solicitor, and then. On the day before we we're supposed to go to court, he rang me up and I said, "Well, how come you're ringing? Aren't we going to court?" And he said, "Oh, that." He said, "Don't worry about that. Well, I'm, I'll just cancel it." I said, "Well, what was the problem anyhow?" And he said, "Well, when I changed from second year to third year for two weeks, you were paying me from the wrong pay." I said, "Why don't you say something?" And anyhow, I told my wife. She looked it up. It was the other way around. He owed us money, but anyhow, it was a matter of um, how people perceive what we're saying and you know exactly what we're saying. But again. I think what we're learning as in our Christian walk is what's coming in our mind and what comes out of our mouth. And sometimes it's pretty hard to hold everything together, but it's a matter of we have to remember, excuse me, by keeping our mind stayed with God and looking to God's word and listening. I think what Angela said, and I, I do all the time, is just pray and listen. God, what do I do in this situation? Start my day. I, I think one of the best things I've found is starting the day with God. I want to surrender my day to you. I want to give full, you full control of everything I say and do. I know he'll never do it, but if you follow the plan he has, things go wonderful until we start going our own way. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll finish up there, this next verse 19, quench not the spirit. And this is, I think, what we've been talking about here in, in uh, um, First Thessalonians chapter nine, so 5, verse 9. Sorry, verse 19. But then we're going to go back on this one, Aaron, to verse verse 9. And I found this verse has actually been wonderful. I've used it so many times when I speak to I'm I'm part of the Facebook Catholic Orthodox Protestant discussion group, which is interesting. There's some interesting characters in there. But um, this is a wonderful verse. And <coughs> excuse me. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is for everyone. And it's one that I know in that Christian, uh, sorry, that Facebook group, there was a, a man there called Joseph. And they, they, when I went on there, they were all attacking each other. Oh, you know, the Catholic Church has got the, everything, the, the Orthodox and the Protestants are all only newcomers. And anyhow, I posted something and then someone attacked me and I just gave them back love and Bible verses. And this Joseph said to me, Felix, you're different to everyone else on this group. You want everybody saved, don't you? I said, yes. <laughs> Basically, that's what we have to recognize. Even though someone gives us something bad, it doesn't mean we have to get, fight, argue with them. That's one that um, we have to learn that God is teaching us and we need to reflect him. It's exactly what we've been, what this lesson is about today and what we've been studying here today. That to keep our mind stayed in him because we trust in him. And if we can spend time with him, he will, he, he can do it. If we just keep going, God, you can do it. Help me to be molded to what you want me to be. Um, he will mold us to what we need to be. 
Okay, has anybody got any comments? Otherwise, we'll finish up here now or, uh, instead of uh, going on. Any, um, Abbott? My, my prayer with on that uh, idea, Felix, is, uh, you know, recently I've had an interaction where I was angry with someone and bitter. And, and then I my prayer was uh, that to be like Christ, that he found nothing, that Satan found nothing in him that would respond to the, the uh, insults and so on of the world. And he responded only in love. And that's my prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll share one uh, one more testimony that I had when I was I was the head the elder of a local church, my a local church, my local church here in Werribee. And basically, um, I was there one Sabbath, and there was a man called Petco came into the church. Now Petco was a pretty big, um, I'm not quite sure what nationality he was, but he was a very rough, very, uh, very, uh, very, very bad person. Um, this, the church had a, a restraining order. He wasn't allowed to ret- att- attend Seventh-day Adventist churches because he caused problems in other churches. So when I saw him in the church, I wanted to get rid of him. But there was another man, an African man, said, no, no, give him another chance, give him another chance. And I, I, I didn't want to. My gut feeling was saying, no, get rid of him. But he um, he ended up there. So anyhow, this African man ended up taking him home for lunch with him. And he took the youth leader and a few other people. And I found out... Um, at the fellowship lunch they had, this Petco said to the youth leader, why don't you come with me to the satanic church? We have fun with little girls. And I thought, when I heard that, I thought, wow. Anyhow, I thought, if he's come to the to the um, church on Sabbath, well, I wonder if he's going to come to the prayer meeting. On the way to the prayer meeting, I start praying. And I said, God, please, if this man comes to the prayer meeting, if anything happens, Please help me not to retaliate. Anyhow, I was actually taking the prayer meeting. So I got there and with the prayer meeting started at seven, I think about quarter past, 20 past, he wasn't there. So I thought, oh, great. And about 20 past, he walked in. And I thought, oh, boy. So I asked someone else to take the meeting. And I took him to the door and, 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 and asked him, I probably a mistake. I went on my own. Um, I probably should have taken someone with me when I thought of it later on. Anyhow, we got to the door and we, we had this discussion. So we were right in the doorway. I was standing in, in the doorway on the outside of the church and he was standing on the inside of the church. And anyway, I kept telling him that the church has got a restraining order. He's not supposed to be in the church and this, and, we, and we, we don't want him there. And, you know, anyhow, in the end, I thought I, I was getting nowhere. So I, you know, I just stepped past him. So I, I was, I ended up inside and he was like on the doorway on the outside. And because of that, he started to, he was going to push through me. So I just put my hands up just to stop him, and I, I broke the button on his shirt. And he said, now look what you've done. And he went whack and gave me a black eye. But by God's grace, I didn't retaliate. <laughs> and so I did martial arts for 20 years. I used to teach it. Uh, but by God's grace, so we rang the police and ended up going to court, and then they got another restraining order. He wasn't to come. But God is molding us. You know, all that we have and we have done in the world is all rubbish. But we need to understand what God is, wants us to be. And we actually understand that God is molding a character that is going to be like Christ. You know, the 144,000, those who are left on the earth, follow the lamb wherever so he goes. And they, are, they follow his character as well. And as uh, we mentioned earlier on, you know, we're going to be following one character or the other. We know that when uh, God's character is fully manifest in his people, he'll come to take a man. When Satan's character is fully manifest in his in his character, um, in his people, God will be coming to take his own people home. And so it's something that we um, we have to remember that basically we have the choice and we've got, we've got the choice now. We can ask God what we should be doing, which way we need to go. And as I said, uh, Hebrews 4, 12 is, is a beautiful verse in 13. That, uh, we need to remember God sees the heart and the mind and basically uh, that's where we're going. Has anybody got any other comments before we close in prayer? No? Okay. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful Sabbath. Ours is actually, we've got a sunny day today, and um, we're I said, a week off spring, so that our apricot trees, our almond trees, our um, plum trees are all got beautiful flowers on them now, so we're going to probably enjoy some nature today and um, enjoy our, our farm here. So we can always just bow our heads and we close in prayer. 
Ja, det, 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 det er hemmelig far. As we come before you, again and always, nothing in our hand we bring, simply to you we cling. Lord, we cling to you, for we know our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And Lord, as we've been talking about the mind, we pray that you'll help us to keep our mind stayed with you because we trust in you. Help us to have more time with you and help us to control what comes out of our mouth and what controls our mind. Help us to put our mind stayed in thee. Help us to know how to do it. Help us to have your Holy Spirit to be able to share with those we come in contact with, especially our own household, our own family, our own uh, brothers and sisters, as we're speaking to now, to help us to realize we have a living Savior who's in the world today. I am he that liveth and was dead, and have, uh, behold, I am alive and forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Lord, bless us with your presence and help us to be able to share you to this world as this world slowly comes to an end. Lord, bless us from this Sabbath to the next and guide us as we journey. And especially bless all our children. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.